Hey, in this session, we're going to talk about the third key area of your life, which is your mental health. And we're going to look at God's promises and God's plan for your mental health. Now, you may not realize it, but there is an invisible war going on around you and actually in you 24 hours a day. And it's a battle for your mind. The reason that the battle is so intense is because whatever gets your mind gets you. The Bible talks about this mental battle in the book of 2 Corinthians in chapter 10, starting in verse number 3. The Bible says this, Though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons of our, that we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they are divine power. They have divine power to demolish strongholds. We, dis, we demolish arguments and every pretension that self, it sets itself up against the knowledge of God. These are uh, what, we're, what the Bible is saying here. They're cognitive words, cognitive mental words. The word argument, pretension, knowledge. Now notice this. This is a mental battle. He's talking and he's saying that, uh, that we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. That's 2 Corinthians 10, verses 3 through 5. Now, what I want to do in this session is focus on this last phrase in the passage that we just read. We take captive every thought and make it obedient to Christ. That phrase, we take captive, it literally means to capture, like capturing a hill uh, in a battle or capturing the flag. It means to conquer. It means to force into submission. Say uncle, right? It means to bring under control. We take captive every thought and we make it obedient to Christ. Now, how do you do that? I want us to look at uh, mental health and an overview of five things. And I'm going to give you something at the end so you can remember it. Five things that, that God says you can do if you're going to be healthier mentally. If you're going to manage your mind, here they are, okay? Very quickly. Number one, the first thing you need to do is this. Don't believe everything you think. Maybe you never thought of that before, but you don't need to believe everything you think. Just because you think it doesn't mean it's true. You see, you and I have an amazing ability to lie to ourselves. We do it all the time. You lie to yourself more than anyone else lies to you. We tell ourselves uh, these type of things uh, all the time. Tell us that things are okay, that, that, but they're, when they're not okay, <laughs> and we tell ourselves that things are, are really bad when they're not that bad, and we justify wrong behaviors. We talk ourselves out of right choices all the time. The Bible says it like this, Jeremiah 17, 9. The heart, and by the way, when, you, when the Bible talks about the heart, it also is talking about the mind. It says the heart and the mind, okay, they go together. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Uh, so again, mind, heart, in the Bible, it goes together. But here it is, Jeremiah 17, 9. The heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? Okay, again, that's Jeremiah 17, 9. I want you to circle in your notebook. Hopefully you've got a notebook there. Circle the word deceitful. What that means is you cannot trust yourself to tell the truth all the time. Let me say that again. You cannot be trusted to tell yourself the truth all the time. Why? Because you just don't do it. You don't tell yourself the truth all the time. Because uh, you get an idea that just because you get that idea doesn't mean it's true. We all have blind spots. I mean, some of us have bald spots, <laughs> but that's some of us. But all of us have blind spots. You don't always see things as they really are. Instead, you see what you want to see. Uh, we see things as we're tr we've trained ourselves to see them. There was actually a study on the eye, and scientists discovered that when you're looking at something, there are more impulses coming from your brain out to your eye than there are impulses from your eye going back to your brain. That's a, that's a real study. What does that mean? 
It means your brain is telling you what to see. So you always don't see things as they are. You see things as your brain wants you to see them. You see things in a way that you filter them, and your filter, it comes from your background, it comes from hurts and your pains and your experiences and all of the things of your past. And so that's why you and I jump to conclusions. There are a lot of ways that we just don't tell ourselves the truth. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 13, 5, examine yourselves to see whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. That's 2 Corinthians 13, 5. You're going to have to test your thoughts if you're really going to move forward into the future. If you're going to become healthy in this third key area of life, which is your mental health, which, by the way, affects everything else in your life, you're going to have to move forward by thinking in new ways. You can't just think in the old ways. You just can't believe the old lies. You know, if you believe the old lies, you're going to stay in trouble and you're going to get further and further into trouble. So the first step is what? Don't believe everything you think. The Bible says test your thoughts and see if it's true. Measure against an objective standard. What's, what's the objective standard in the world? It's God's word. It's the only thing really that we can measure anything against to see if it's true. Which that leads me to the second thing. Okay, the Bible teaches. Here we go. Not only do I need to not believe everything I think, but number two, I need to guard my mind. You need to guard your mind. Against what? Against garbage. You probably heard an old stating, an old statement. What is that old statement? Garbage in, garbage out. Garbage in, garbage out. In other words, and that's a computer statement. So what's true of a computer is also true of your mind. If you fill your mind with garbage, that's what you're going to get out of it in your lifestyle. Garbage in, garbage out. Proverbs 15, verse 14, it says this, a wise person is hungry for the truth while the fool feeds on trash. What a verse. Some of you need to put that verse on a post-it note and stick it on your cell phone. A fool feeds on trash. You ought to put that on your social media. You should put that on your web browser. A fool feeds on trash. The Bible says a wise person is hungry for truth while a fool feeds on trash. Garbage in, garbage out. When you come and think about it, there are really three kinds of food that you can fill your mind with, or if we'll just call it mental food. You can fill your mind with healthy brain food, right? We're talking about, we're making these comparisons between food that we put into our bodies and then food we put into our mind. What kind of food can we put into our body? What kind of food can we put into our mind? Okay, we can fill our minds with healthy brain food. That's things that encourage you. Things that build you up, things that make you smarter, things that make you more skillful, more successful, okay? Or you can fill your mind with junk food. And if you want to know what that is, just turn on your phone or any device. And, junk, and by the way, junk food isn't always necessarily poisonous. It just doesn't have a lot of benefit. We call those empty calories, don't we? And instead... Uh, and, and a steady diet of junk food, what? What is it going to be? It's obviously going to be unhealthy for you physically, but I want you to know junk food, brain junk food, will be unhealthy for you mentally. You can get so filled up with junk food, mental things, for example, like the news, right? And they may not necessarily be good or bad. They're just, they're just news. They're just facts. But because you fill yourself up on, on that kind of junk food, then you don't have the appetite to feed yourself the healthy brain food, which would be like the word of God. So it's just empty mental calories. Have you ever done that? Of course you have. You fill your mind with these empty mental calories and then, uh, you know, and then there's no room for anything else. Because you've binged out on whatever it is those empty calories are, then you don't have time to read and you don't have time to study. You don't have time to learn. So that's, that's the empty uh, mental calories. Then, of course, you know, we talk about healthy brain food. We talk about junk brain food. But then there's the third kind, and that's toxic food, toxic 
brain food. Pornography is a type of toxic brain food. Occultic literature, you know, things about evil spirits and Satanism and false belief systems, that's filling your mind up with ungodly things, and it's toxic. Uh, it gets into your system, and then it poisons your thinking. The Bible says this in Psalms 101, verse 3. I will not set before my eyes anything that is worthless. If ever there was a good verse for us to memorize, it's Psalms 101, verse 3. I will not set any wicked thing before my eyes, any worthless thing before my eyes. Do you ever do that? You ever put something before your eyes that's worthless? Sure you do. I do it too. But, uh, but what we're saying is we're going to guard ourselves, guard our minds, and we're, we're going to put a guard up, right, so that we protect ourselves against the garbage. Now, how do we do that? How do we keep from thinking about things that are harmful to you? Well, let me give you a couple of ways. Number one, I would say, is conversational prayer. Conversational prayer just means that you talk to the Lord constantly through the day. It doesn't mean you're like on your knees with your hands folded and your eyes closed. No, it just means that you talk to God all day long about everything you're doing. It'd be like, God, I'm going to lunch right now. I'm getting ready to have this meeting, God. <laughs> I got to go to the bank. Help me as I go to the bank here. I mean, every opportunity, every challenge, every idea, every experience, everything throughout the day, you just keep a running conversation going on with God. And when you do this, when you're just talking to God constantly, it keeps you aware that God is always with you. And that'll put a filter on your mind because you don't want to think about junk, toxic stuff when you know God's presence is right there with you, right? And, and by the way, God's always with you. He's always present. It just it makes me laugh when someone says, oh, I better not lie. I'm in the church building or I may not. I shouldn't cuss here. I'm in the church. But I'm thinking like, well, if you're not going to do it in the church building, you shouldn't do it at home either, because God's just as much with you at home as he is in this church building. He's always present. And so uh, that's how we block out, you know, these these toxic thoughts by uh, having a conversational uh, prayer life with God. Another way to block out worthless thoughts is to focus on things that are good. Focus. Now, what someone will try to tell you is just to resist the bad thoughts, but it, it's, that, that doesn't work. Don't just resist the bad thoughts. What you got to do is refocus on good thoughts, because when you think about it, you can't get bad things out of your mind by trying not to think about it. You can't think, okay, it'd be like this. I'm, I have these keys here. Let me use this as an example. Okay, okay, I'm going to try not to think about these keys. So, man, I don't want to think about these keys. I don't want to think about these keys. I don't want to think about these keys. Doesn't make sense, does it? Why? <laughs> because the whole time I'm thinking about the keys. I mean, I'm, I'm focusing on not, you know, focusing on the keys and doing that reversively or subversively. I'm focusing on the keys the whole time. The only way, okay, I need you to listen to this. This is powerful. This is helpful. The only way to get the bad thought out of your mind is not just resisting it, but by what? By replacing it, finding something else. Maybe my watch here. I, I'm thinking about my watch, and now I'm no longer thinking about my keys. So replacing it. You replace it with something else. That way you guard your mind against the garbage, right? And the way to do that is not to resist. Oh. I can't do this anymore. No, it's to replace and look at something else. Find something else to think about. Uh, because if you try to do it differently, you're just going to focus on that thing. So you got to flip the channel and think about something else. Here's a third key. The third thing you need to do if you want to have a healthy mind is that you have to determine to never let up on learning. Never let up on learning. Never Stop learning. Make learning a lifetime habit. Do you know what it means to be a disciple? This whole campaign is about jumpstarting our discipleship. Do you know what it means to be a disciple? The word disciple literally means learner. That's what it means, learner. That's what they would call Jesus. They would call Jesus teacher or rabbi. And they were called disciples. Why? Because they were learning from him. You can't be a disciple of Jesus if you don't keep on learning. 
You should be in a continuous learning program for the rest of your life. The moment you stop learning is the moment you start dying. Look what the Bible says in Proverbs 18, 15. It says this, intelligent people are always ready to learn. Is that you? Are you intelligent? Are you always ready to learn? Are you always trying to learn from anybody and everybody? That's what the Bible says. The Bible says intelligent people are always ready to learn. Their ears are open for knowledge. You got to be looking and you're listening. You're thinking, what can I learn from this situation? In every situation. Another verse says this in Proverbs 10, verse 14. Wise people store up knowledge. Do you do that? Do you store up knowledge? Come on, circle the words or that phrase store up. This is one of the only things in scripture that we're told to store up. There are things the Bible says don't store up, like money. Don't store up those things. But it says you can store up knowledge. It says don't store up wealth. Why? Well, I remember, you know, the, the moth is going to eat it up. The, the thief is going to steal it, right? Rust is going to corrupt it. Don't store up that, that the wealth because you can't take it to heaven with you. But the Bible says you can store up knowledge. Why? Because knowledge is going to build your character. The Bible says store up knowledge. Well, well the question would be then, how do I do that? How do I store up knowledge? Well, you do it by not, uh, by never <laughs> stop learning. When you, when you just determine to always be a learner. Now, I, I would give you two practical ways that you can always be a learner. Okay? Number one is by reading. And number two is through relationships. Reading, two R's. Reading and relationships. Reading is indiv an individualized input. Relationships are communal input. And you need both in order to keep learning, to never stop learning for the rest of your life. Someone said this, and I think they're right. Your life is going to be largely determined largely controlled and largely influenced by the books you read and the people you meet or the people you hang out with. Those two things are going to determine your life, the books you read and the people you meet. And maybe you, you're out there and you're like, well, I don't even like to read books. <laughs> okay. You don't have to actually read them if you don't like to read. Uh, today, I want you to know you can listen. You can listen to books. You can listen to audiobooks. That's one of my favorite things to do is listen to a book while I'm driving in the car. Or listen while I'm, or well, not working out. I don't do that as much as, as I need to. But, you know, maybe while I'm preparing dinner, I listen to a book, right? Uh, you can listen to podcasts. You can listen to live streams. You can get on YouTube and just get endless amounts of sermons and lectures. You can watch TED Talks and, and videos and seminars of all different types. We're so blessed to be able to get so much knowledge just by listening or watching. You can get good, solid Christian books. I would encourage you to get some classic Christian books, books that are over 100 years old. Those are sometimes great books, or books on leadership, you know, all types of ways that you can store up knowledge and store up wisdom. The Bible says in Proverbs 19 verse 8, those who get wisdom do themselves a favor and those who love learning will succeed. If you want to succeed in life, the key is what the, exactly the Bible says, what God says. You want to be successful? Never stop learning. Never I know some people, you may be like, I haven't opened a book since I left school. Or I haven't, you know, listened. I mean, some of you out there are like, you haven't listened to a message or, you know, you haven't gone to, you know, to listen to a sermon. And you don't, I don't know how long it's been. But let me tell you, this is how you get wise. This is how you get knowledge. And this is how you're successful. Reading, that's one way. But another way, and we talked about this, to put brain food, right, uh, and be healthy mentally is through relationships. The key to learning from relationships is this. Learn to ask great questions. That's one thing I loved about reading through the Gospels and reading about Jesus. Jesus was the best at asking good questions. Learn to ask great questions. You can learn, listen, you can learn from anybody if you know how to ask the right questions. So, I think you should spend time with smart people. You can learn 
all you can from them. And as I said before, you can learn from anybody if you know how to ask the right questions. This is one of the reasons why your small group is so important. Because you can learn from the experiences of other people. You can't do that by yourself. You, 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 you've heard, okay, people say it's wise to learn from experience. Well, of course it's wise to learn from experience. But can I tell you this? It's wiser to learn from the experience of others. Why? Because I don't have time to make all the mistakes by myself. You know, and, and it's a lot less painful, by the way, to learn from uh, the mistakes of other people. I don't have time. I've made a lot of mistakes, but I don't have time to make all the mistakes myself. So what I would like is I'd like for you to go out and make a few mistakes, and then you tell me what doesn't work. So that way I don't have to make those mistakes for myself. You know, that's what we do when we get together in your small group, when we learn from each other. I mean, yes, you got to read and you, you know, and the way I do that, again, I use Audible or, or I, I find ways to, to get that information. I do even like a, a good old fashioned book, but there's also your small group and that small group and those relationships, those also feed your brain just like reading does. Never let up on learning. That's a habit for mental health. Now, let me give you the fourth habit. All right, here it is. For the fourth re way that you need to be mentally healthy, all right, in this key area of life, is this. Renew your mind daily with God's word. Now, I've already talked about this in the first lesson. I hope that you, you, you were there to hear that one. So I'm not going to um, cover, you know, cover it in great detail, but let me say this. God's word has the power to renew our minds. If your mind has been messed up, by pornography, by drugs, pain, hurt, abuse, resentment, you know, all these, these damaging, toxic things, then you need to have your mind washed. You need to have your mind renewed. Our minds get tired and our minds run out of energy. That means we need to renew our minds. We need to transform our thinking. You see, if you want to change anything in your life, now listen closely. If you want to change anything in your life, it's going to start in your mind. Change doesn't start with your behavior. Change, change never starts in your actions. It always starts in your thoughts. If you can change your thoughts, you can change the way you feel. If you change the way you feel, it changes the way you act. Romans 12, 2. Have you heard this verse yet? <laughs> it says it like this. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world. Okay, behavior. Remember, that's the actions, behavior. Okay, don't copy that, but what it says, but let God transform you into a new person. Don't we all want that? Would you like to be transformed into a new person? Okay, then look at the rest of the verse. It says, how do we do that? How do we, how do we change into a new person? Here it is. By changing the way you think. Changing the way you think. Then you will learn God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. I mean, don't we all want that? Don't you want to know God's will for your life? Wouldn't you like to know what's good and what's pleasing, what's perfect for your life? The Bible then says, let God renew your mind. Why do we do this? You know, uh, or, or, or why don't we do this? You know? Why won't we let God renew our minds through the word of God? Well, look, look what, why, why should we do this? Look at another verse, Isaiah 26, 3. It says this, you will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you, whose thoughts are fixed on you. The more you can focus on God in your life, the more you can focus on his word, the more you can focus on Jesus, then the more peace you're going to have. If you focus on God, you're focusing on who? The Prince of Peace. If you want to have peace of mind, you need to fix your mind on God every single day. How do I do that? How do we do that? Here's something practical. Start your day with God. Everything, uh, you know, that you got going on in life, put that to the side. 
and start listening to the Word of God or reading the Word of God. Somehow get the Word of God in you before you do anything else, else if it's possible. Uh, we talked about in uh, the first lesson, uh, having a quiet time. So that's letting God's word, you know, be first in your life. Let God's word be the first word in your life every single day. Why? Because, and even like, you know, studies would say this. Study after study would say that the, uh, that the first five to ten minutes of your day usually going to determine your mood for the rest of your day. That makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? I mean, some of us wake up, you know, in such a tizzy, or we wake up late, and we wake up late, and then the rest of our day's bad. So we want to change that. How do we change that? Well, we're going to start our day differently. If you can, if you can start it, start it with God's word being the first word. Uh, you know, so, you know, now what do we do? What do we normally do? We wake up, and what's the first thing we check? Come on, what's the first thing we check? We check our phones. And what's on that phone? A lot of the times, most of the time, bad news. We check our phones and, and then, and, you know, this is happening over in this part of the world. And, and this person failed in this way. And that's the first news we get on in the first part of our day. And we wonder why our days are messed up. Uh, but instead, what should we do? We should start with good news. You know, you ever wonder why you were cranky and in a bad mood all day? You get up, you hit the alarm clock, and then maybe even wake up and you watch the news and you watch bad news and you listen to the radio and you, or you read the bad news in the paper. Stop that. Stop it. The Bible is good news. So start your life every single day by renewing your mind with God's words. Now, there's one more habit that you need, okay? I know I've said a lot, but thank you for, for being mentally engaged here. Here's the last thing, habit number five for your mental health. And this one is a fun one, by the way. You ready? Number five, let God stretch your imagination. Let God stretch your imagination. The Bible says this. Oh, this is one of the best verses. And I mean, all the verses in the Bible are good, but this is one of my favorites. Now, glory be to God, who by his mighty power at work within us is able to do far more than we uh, would ever dare to ask or even dream of infinitely beyond our highest prayers and desires and our thoughts and our hopes. Uh, may he be given glory forever. Amen. Let me ask you this question. What are you dreaming about? What are you asking God for in your life? What are your highest prayers? What are your deepest desires? What are your greatest thoughts? What are your greatest hopes? The Bible says in that verse that God wants you to dream great dreams, big dreams. So let me encourage you to let God stretch your imagination. That's a part of having a healthy mind. You, uh, you know, I mean, just think about this, okay? How can God help you reach your goals if you don't have any goals? How can God fulfill your dreams if you don't have any dreams? God can't exceed your expectations if you don't have any expectations. The Bible says it like this. Where there is no vision, the people perish. If you don't have a vision, if you don't have a dream, then you're not really living. You're just existing. Maybe you never thought about it like this. But God wants to stretch your imagination. He wants you to dream big dreams so you can accomplish great things for his glory. Somebody said have God-sized dreams. And if they're not God-sized, they'll fall short because you can accomplish them in your own power. But when you dream God-sized dreams, then only God gets the glory when they're accomplished. So let me close with this. Remember I told you I was going to give you a way to remember these five things? All right, here it is. It's a simple little acrostic to help you remember five habits. It's based on the word think. T-H-I-N-K. T-H-I-N-K. You ready? Think. Here it is. Letter T. It means test every thought. Don't believe everything you think. Test it against Scripture because Scripture is true. All right? So T is Test every thought. H, it stands for helmet. Put on the helmet of salvation. What, where does the helmet go? Helmet goes on your head. What does the helmet do? A helmet protects your mind. Put on the helmet of salvation to guard your mind against garbage. Right? Garbage in, garbage out. 
All right, so you got it? T-H-I. I means imagine. Great thoughts. Come on, use your imagination. Don't be afraid to dream. Great dreams. Let God stretch your imagination. All right, what's next? N. N stands for nourish a godly mind. How do you do that? By renewing your mind daily with God's word. Have a daily time with God. Make God's word the first word in your life every single day. And then lastly is K. K stands for this. Keep on learning. Never stop reading. Never stop asking questions. You can learn from anybody. And as you faithfully follow these habits, as you think, as you faithfully follow and build them into your lives, they'll lead you into a much healthier state of mind. And you can think for the glory of God. And I want to pray for you. I want to pray over your mental health. Can we pray? Father, help us to think. Help us, Lord, to think true thoughts. Help us to put on that helmet of salvation and to imagine and to nourish our mind and to keep on learning. And I pray as we come out of this, this series of transformation that our minds would be renewed and transformed. And Lord, there are going to be great, great things happen in our lives as we get mentally healthy. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So I know you're going to go to discussion time now. And uh, after your discussion time, I hope to see you this Sunday, whether it's in person or on online. And uh, this Sunday is going to start session four, and you don't want to miss it. God bless.